Hello True Believers and welcome back to Kevin Knox's Mighty Marvel Mayhem where I take a look at the history of Marvel Comics as I take on my quest to read or reread as the case may be the entirety of the Marvel Universe. It's all right here at Kevin Knox's Mighty Marvel Mayhem with your host, that's me, Kevin Knox. Now let's get rolling. Hello and welcome to a very special episode of Kevin Knox's Mighty Marvel Mayhem. That's right, this episode is a lean, mean, green fighting machine. That's right. It's 100% Hulk. All the Hulk. All the time. Well, at least for the next nine minutes or so. So let's get started. Now, a few episodes back, we took a look at Hulk issue number one. Let's go over that just quickly. I mean, you probably know the origin. Mild-mannered, brilliant scientist Bruce Banner is doing experiments with radiation and gamma rays. And stupid teenage idiot Rick Jones gets in the way. Well, Bruce Banner has to save him, pushes him out of the way, but then is bombarded by gamma rays and becomes the Incredible Hulk. Now, with other superheroes, like when the Fantastic Four were bombarded by cosmic rays, they became superheroes. When Thor clicked his walking stick on the ground and became the God of Thunder, he was a superhero. When Hank Pym shrunk down and became Ant-Man, he became a superhero. Well, when the Hulk became the Hulk, he didn't really become a superhero. I mean, he didn't become a supervillain either. He was just, you know, a big, mean, green, mad guy. Now, actually, he wasn't green in the first place. As you look at issue number one, you'll see that he was gray. Gray? What are you talking about? He's the Jade Giant. Let me explain. When the craters, who of course are Stan Lee and Jack Kirby, first created the Incredible Hulk, they wanted a story like Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. They wanted like a dark, brooding character, so they made him gray. But then the printer said, hey, Stan and Jack, you know, we're using cheap pulp material, we're using cheap inks because comics weren't the slick commodity they are now, and the gray wasn't consistent on every page. So with issue two, they decided to make him green, which worked out well because Martin Goodman, the publisher of Marvel Comics, wanted him green in the first place. And green he stayed. Well, he became gray a little bit later on, but he went back to green. Mainly he's green. A mean green fighting machine. This guy. Yeah, the Hulk. Now let's take a look at other characters in the Hulk. Well, we have Bruce Banner, who became the Hulk. And we have the idiot Rick Jones. Now you're probably getting the impression I don't like Rick Jones very much. Well, I mean, it's his fault that the Hulk became the Hulk. Or the Banner became Hulk. But yet they became BFFs. What's up with that? I mean, I'd be pissed off at this stupid kid. I mean, yes, he's integral in the forming of the Avengers. He's integral in Captain Marvel being on Earth. He's integral in the Kree Skrull Wars. He even becomes Captain America's sidekick, the second Bucky, Bucky 2.0. But for the most part, Rick Jones is still just an idiot kid here. But he's BFS with the Hulk. You know who's not BFS with the Hulk? General Thunderbolt Ross. That's right, General Thunderbolt Ross. Now see, Bruce Banner, even though he was a civilian, worked on an army base in a science lab. And the army base was ruled by General Thunderbolt Ross. Now General Thunderbolt Ross wasn't a fan of Bruce Banner's. Bruce Banner was, as he called him, a milksop. It's a great term. To put it to today's adage, a nerd, a dweeb, a dork, whatever. But he didn't like Bruce Banner. And he especially didn't like that his daughter, Betty Ross, was in love with Bruce Banner. But as much as he hated Bruce Banner, he hated the Hulk more. See, Rick Jones was the only one that knew Hulk and Bruce were the same person. So General Thunderbolt Ross had a big heart on for the Hulk, and not in a good way. He wanted to get rid of him. He even enlisted Bruce Banner to try to get rid of him. At one point, he even brought in the Fantastic Four to try to get rid of him. Didn't work, though. What did get rid of him? The inconsistencies. See, not just from going from gray to green, but at first it wasn't the Hulk got mad, Hulk smash. No, the Hulk became the Hulk whenever the sun went down. The sun went back up, he became Bruce Banner again. Then in issue two, or actually issue three, one of those issues, they kind of blend in in these early issues here. The Hulk was tricked into going up into space. General Thunderbolt Ross thought, we'll just launch him into space and then he'll be gone. You know, the Illuminati, many years later, tried this and it 
started World War Hulk, but that's another story for another time, way down the line. Right now, the Hulk came back to Earth, though, and Thunderbolt Ross was thwarted in his desire to get rid of the Hulk. But when the Hulk came back, he was no longer the same Hulk. Now he was being able to be controlled by Rick Jones. Yes, Rick Jones could tell the Hulk what to do. Eventually that changed as well. And then Bruce Banner came up with a machine that he could change back and forth from the Hulk and Bruce Banner whenever he wanted. But he kept the mind of Bruce Banner. So he was a smart Hulk. I mean, he wasn't a Hulk smash. He was an actual smart Hulk. I mean, he still had an attitude problem. I mean, you would too. I mean, this guy's on basic gamma steroids. But see, there's even one time when the Hulk changes into the Bruce Banner changes into the Hulk, but he keeps the face of Bruce Banner, a face of the milksop Bruce Banner. Luckily, he has an array of Hulk masks hanging around because, you know, why wouldn't he? But see, it's these inconsistencies. Gray to green, but then how does he change? Why does he change? Does he say Bruce Banner inside? What happens? And this is what led to sales not exactly being brisk and, this, and the issue, the series being canceled after issue number six. Just six issues and the Hulk was gone. Now, of course, the Hulk would come back. He'd be one of the five original members of the, the Avengers in a few months. And even after leaving that, he would take over the headlining gig in Tales to Astonish before that title was changed with issue 102 to The Incredible Hulk. So the Hulk would be back and the Hulk would smash a lot more stuff as we move on. As for the other characters, well, I told you what happens with Rick Jones. What about General Thunderbolt Ross and Betty Ross? Well, spoiler alert, they may become Hulks of their own later on. A different hued Hulk, but still Hulks. So that's the story of the Incredible Hulk in his first six issue series. The Mean Green Fighting Machine. I'd like to thank you for watching this episode. And if you liked it, give it the old thumbs up. And what did you think? Scroll down to the comments and let me know what you think. And as always, if you don't already subscribe to Kevin Knox's Mighty Marvel Mayhem, this is a good time to do it. Click on that subscribe button. You know you want to. Well, for now, that's it, gang. Hulk smash. See you in the funny pages.